is going on guys my name is Bryce and welcome back to another video or update up on uh, the hex solution game that I am currently working on um, this week has been a little bit of a all over the place but I've managed to get uh, probably a good two to three hours worth of work on the game this week uh, you guys have to remember that I am also currently working full-time um, so I don't have Heaps of time to throw towards the game, but I'm getting getting there. Uh, baby steps as we go, um, bits and pieces of work uh, all over the place, um, and working on all sorts of random um, aspects of the game. Um, trying to focus a little bit more on mechanics first, um, and then start working on making the game look a little bit nicer. Um, so right now, um, mostly. Uh, I'm, you, you'll, you'll see this in the background, I'm doing a lot of googling and, and bits and pieces um, and you'll be able to see the, like, what I'm actually doing um, in the game. So I mean, the majority of the start of this week I actually realised that I had accidentally deleted a bunch of the work that I'd already, I had already done. Um, so the spawn menu uh, sort of disappeared um, and I wasn't aware that I had done this um, until I jumped on this uh, on that particular day which I believe was Wednesday uh, to do a bit of work and realized that it was missing so I did actually end up uh, rebuilding that but that was good because I actually wanted to rebuild and redo a uh, large chunk of the, the the way that I was handling uh, tiles and the tile behaviors um, so rather than just creating a bunch of prefabs with a bunch of different scripts on them um, I wanted to actually go down the route of doing uh, scriptable objects and actually uh, sort of sort of scripting out all the objects so I can add different variables and stuff and then I can use those as like a new data type in other scripts as well. Um, that way it just sort of neatens everything up and then I can just have uh, a particular asset um, that's a big script that has the three different stages of a, of a tiles. Um, evolution um, if you would like to call it that it so I can you know like when you first place down a down the tile it will start at evolution or the, the you know the zero percent mark and then there might be some animation stuff around the tile but then it will then step up into the 50 percent mark and then it will step up then into the 100 percent mark once um, a certain time frame is complete um, you will also see me working a little bit on that sort of system on um, on working on getting the uh, game objects to sort of change or switch out places um, as as the game plays. So that that was a little bit of an interesting one there, as I had to uh, learn how to or really um, learn learn how to delete and reinstantiate different game objects without uh, without deleting the the parent object that the script is running on, because obviously you can't delete a a game object and then obviously still have it script do something because obviously you've removed that game object from the hierarchy um, so that was a little bit of a interesting challenge uh, just learning out how to get uh, not only just instantiate a new object but then make it as a child of a empty object that just is just holding the script and doing the logic behind the different uh, spawn changes um, which also I had to then go and change a bunch of other little bits and pieces inside the player controller to uh, to, to make this work. Um, there was other little bits and pieces and little bits of fiddly work that I ended up doing. Um, again, like I redid a whole bunch of that UI um, and spawn menu and I finally managed to get the, um, the uh, scroll working with the spawn menu so you can have multiple tiles and you can scroll through the list between them. Um, I haven't reincorporated the uh, the tile selection and the tile information stuff just yet. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really like the last way that I did it, and I'm, I might end up rewriting a little bit more logic to actually um, make it a little bit more uh, a little bit more seamless, but a little bit a little bit nicer and it looks a little bit better. Um, whether or not I actually leave a little bit less information off the screen. Um, and then just sort of maybe use that extra information maybe in like a you know, sort of pause help menu that will give you extra information um, about each tile rather than bringing up big pop-ups about 
uh, about the different information and behaviors about everything um, all on the one screen it get it does tend to get a little bit crowded with this sort of uh, RTS style game where that you got to have a lot of different elements on the screen like I've got the got all the resources um, at the top of the screen and a menu button and then I've got a mini map down the corner so you can sort of see where the tiles are and bits and pieces um, UI is definitely not my strong point I am definitely uh, more capable with the programming and and understanding how code works um, and again I'm, I'm writing this majority of this game as I can by myself um, I might eventually start leaning on some additional assets from the asset store if, uh, if, if need be to sort of help handle some sort of different aspects of the game um, but at this current point I'm really enjoying learning how to uh, handle and manage things like the resource system that right now if you actually look at the resource script it's literally just a bunch of different variables and I'm assigning different variables and it's it's really messy so I'm sure I can probably find an asset on the asset store I think I even have some that might actually help manage that system way more efficiently um, and it also uh, just bits and pieces of performance with uh, with the game as well so uh, I can't remember if I, 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 mean, I did a little bit of it this week. Um, you also might have seen it a little bit last week as well, but I did a lot of uh, a lot of little tweaking and bits and pieces inside the uh, in, in a script and in the editor to uh, to actually get um, game objects to uh, disable their renderer when they're not in view. Um, and this, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a perfect solution um, to stopping the. Uh, stopping anything from having issues with performance but I mean it's gonna stop uh, items or the renderers being activated and, and things like shaders trying to make the trees wiggle and stuff like that um, the leaves and stuff like that I mean when you when you start having that stuff even though you can't see it in the camera the game is still calculating those sort of values and and the shaders doing work in the background even though you, the camera is not looking at it so when disabling the renderer it now allows the game to uh, run a little bit smoother because you're not that the game isn't trying to uh, try and use these shaders multiple times on all these different trees and stuff like that to uh, look them make them look a little bit more dynamic um, and then there's other things like I ended up getting rid of uh, the low poly water um, this game is definitely going to have a lot more of a low poly aspect and a low poly um, sort of aesthetic to the uh, to the game, um, you know, hence like the uh, hexagons and bits and pieces. But I do tend to want to get um, that really low poly, like the really nice triangular water in the water tiles. Uh, but unfortunately, just because of the way that you have to actually, uh, you you actually have to go ahead and do that with uh, particular shaders and, and mesh mod uh, modifiers and stuff like that, it really adds a lot of strain onto the uh, onto the, the system that it's running on due to the fact that it has to do multiple hundreds or thousands worth of these calculations um, trying to work out how to make the water move and wave and even if you don't have that, uh, even if you have no noise on it, it's still really badly affected the performance of the game so we we also uh, just sort of got rid of that and just made it a big giant hexagon that was transparent and blue. Uh, that way, we can at least um, we, we can at least have the aspect of water. Um, yeah, I mean, we might actually end up putting some more a, a different water um, on there at some point um, once we get a little bit more work done um, and start working on more of the aesthetic side of the game. Um, at this current point, I'm really just focusing on getting all the mechanics in and debugging the mechanics and getting them working well. And once I know that the mechanics are working well, and I'm not building all the mechanics all at once, there's still a few bits and pieces here and there, uh, but once the mechanics are all working well and I can actually uh, sort of play the game in its current form um, comfortably without having too much, uh, too many problems or anything like that, then I'm going to start putting more focus on uh, remodeling a whole bunch of the tiles and 
and getting it, making it look really, really pretty um, and style. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to go stylized, but I like that sort of aesthetic. Um, so at this point in time, we're we're getting there slowly. Um, I mean, I might end up going into an alpha at some point. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to be interested in whether or not they would like to help play test the game once it gets to a point that it can actually be played. Because right now it's literally a matter of you just clicking places and putting tiles down. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood for other bits and pieces, but obviously the main gameplay mechanics haven't been fully implemented yet. Um, I, I mean, this, this game's fairly ambitious, so uh, we're, we're getting there. Uh, but apart from that, I am going to stop rambling on, seeing the fact that this is getting up to almost the end of the video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, remember to hit the like button and subscribe and hit that little notification bell just so you know when I upload uh, either anything new on Hex Solution or any other 3D printing or uh, networking related videos. Um, and make sure you go down and uh, actually like the Facebook page uh, for Hex Solution as well, where that's where the bulk of my uh, gameplay and, and work and updates and stuff like that are going. Um, I mean, I do a little bit on Twitter, so I'll also link that in the in the uh, description as well next to the Facebook link. But yeah, other than that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.